Welcome to our 17th tutorial on Herlang. Today we're going to continue from where we left off last time, which was the Gen server. And today we're going to talk about the supervisor. The supervisor supervises other processes called child processes. It can be a worker or another supervisor. Workers are usually implemented using Gen Event, Gen FSM, or Gen Server. Using a supervisor helps us create a fault tolerant system. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is to add a new Erlang file, is to add a supervisor. We call it factorial supervisor. And right here we have some generated functions already. Um, I just cleared everything off so we can start the factorial supervisor from scratch and I'll explain as I go. The first thing we want is the start link and we have to export it as well. Export. This is going to be just global. Start link. Takes in zero argument. And basically the start link starts everything. But the start link is going to call the supervisor callback function call in it and we want to set some kind of information to let us know that the supervisor started so IO format so after writing the little information just to let us know that the server started we want to write a restart strategy and those strategies into the flag variable. The first one is restart strategy. Basically a one-for-one -one strategy means if one goes down only that one is restarted or we can also have a one-for-all restart strategy which means if one goes down every single server is restarted but for the purpose of this tutorial we only need a one for one since we only have one server running. The maximum restart and the maximum seconds between restart basically means if our server crashes three times within five seconds the system totally crashes and it doesn't restart again. Finally we're going to define the child specification the first thing we have to set is the ID. The ID is the name that will be used to identify the child specification internally by the supervisor. And we also have the stat function which we have in this topo here. The factorial server will be the name of our module that we're going to call which is this. And the start link would be basically the function we're going to call which is the first function starts link which then calls the init function the next part is the argument we're going to send but we're sending an empty argument because it takes nothing the next part is the restart strategy we're going to use the restart defines when a terminated child process should be restarted we can have permanent which means the child process should always restart and temporary means the child should never restart and transient which restarts if abnormal ends. The shutdown part the shutdown defines our child process should be terminated either brutal kill which means the child will be on unconditionally terminated 
uses using the exit or we can have an integer timeout which gives the which gives the process plenty of time to shut down type specify if the child process is a supervisor or a worker and the final section the list contains modules basically this part is used by the release handler during the code replacement to determine which process are using a certain module but all we have to worry about is sending the tuple that contains the flag and a list of all child specifications we can send multiple child specifications depends on how many supervisors or how many worker we're looking over an example of this would be if we have a second child specification called child specification 2 which we don't have in this case so this doesn't matter now that we have everything completed in the factorial supervisor we want to build the project and we want to run it what we do now is called the factorial supervisor and we call the startling function and as you can see the global factorial supervisor is starting which was the reason for this information here and the factorial server starting as well now let's try call supervisor again and we have error already started so what we want to do now is to call the factorial client factorial client and send in factorial of 5 for example and we get answer 120 now let's try crash the application by sending in an atom GHA or any form of atom that is and we get a server crash let me just scroll this up so when we scroll up as you can see we have server starting an error report a really long error report so we can type in factor of 5 again the system has crashed oh boy the reason we're getting multiple crashes the reason what what application isn't reloading is because we're running this in an IDE shell so to fix this problem what you want to do is create another start link function called start link shell nothing now let's see how this fares off so we build we rebuild the project and let's see how it works this time so we call back supervisor startling shell perfect everything is working and now we call factorial of 5 we get 120 and now let's crash it and we should get restart terminating server server restarting now let's call factorial 5 again everything is back working and if we crash it rapidly 5 or 6 times it wouldn't work again so we call 5 and it stopped working that is because that is because we have the maximum restart is 3 within 5 seconds and the application crashes 3 times within 5 seconds so it was permanently crashed before we conclude we just have to change the factorial client and remove the start and the stop function so the client won't have the access to start the server and the only thing the client can do is just call the factorial recorder and a factorial function.
If you have any questions, feel free to private message me or post a comment below each video. Just bear in mind that I'm learning Erlang myself and I'm just deciding to share everything I figure out or find out as I learn it. See you in the next tutorial.